Is there a world where AI is able to process things faster than the human brain at some point in the future? It's a great question, and in, in specific domains, we're already there. I mean, if you think about chess or, or Go, it's been, a, it's been five years, maybe a decade now, since there's no chance for any human to beat the, the best computers. You know, we're, we're already past that. And, uh, uh, and, and you're absolutely right, the brain has limitations. And the reason is it's also, at some level, a computational device. I mean, it is a set of synapses and neurons that are changing their, 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 their state, their weights, and so on. And so it's, it's, that's computation. And uh, it may not be a digital computer like you have on your desktop, but, but it's, it, is a, it is computation. And that, those limits apply to that, too. Nevertheless, the brain is exhibiting what you alluded to as you know, general intelligence. It's able to do converse. It's able to solve problems, learn new things, you know, learn new skills, generalize, you know, have common sense, all these things, which till recently we didn't know, and some people argue would not be possible for artificial uh, computation. That distinction is now much less clear. And as far as AI taking over is concerned, take, take a simple thing. If you want somebody to explain it to you, explain a concept to you, a well-known concept, I find it, in some cases, ChatGPT is better than, than, than most people. Not everybody. And the reason is, you can say, explain to me this concept. It will give you an explanation. Give me an example. Is this what you mean? You get this continuous feedback and, and, and uh, you know. Uh, and it's usually pretty accurate. On things that are well known. Right. And I think that's a good segue. And I want to, yeah, let's, let's segue here. Let's zoom way back out. Mm -hmm. And explain to me, like I'm a fourth grader, how a program like ChatGPT works. Okay, good. So ChatGPT is what's called a generative AI. It, um, it, it uh, can generate sequences of, let's say, text, and now images and whatever other, other types of things. Um, and it can also take some text that you give it or some sequence of what are called tokens that you give it and then generate more, right? So for example, if you said, uh, uh, tell me a story about the sun, it will generate a story about the sun. If you just said, tell me a bedtime story, there will be another one. So that's, that's the way it's operating. But you could also say, I am feeling a pain in my lower knee, uh, what should I do? It may ask you a question and so on, just as you would have in a conversation with a specialist. So um, that's the nature of how it works, how, how it, um, the interface works with you. So when you're interfacing with it, it feels like you're almost chatting with another person on the other side. I say, Professor, no, that's not a good example. I say, ChatGPT, tell me a bedtime story. And it spits back out a bedtime story. But functionally, it's not thinking through a bedtime story, right? How does it work functionally? Oh, good, okay, good. So, you know, we have done, what does thinking mean, <laughs> right? For, for us, we, we use these terms, and thinking is some sequence of things that the brain does and generates thought and sequence of ideas and so on. But what, I can tell you what chat GPT is doing, uh, or programs like GPT. They're, they're what are called large language models. And indeed, language model, because language is this, you know, the pinnacle of human abilities. And, um, um, and so what, what it does is it's trained on a large amount of data, naturally occurring data, the entire web is what GPT trained on. And then the point is that it is able to, we, we think of all of this training data as a distribution on what happens next. If I say a sequence of things like the sun rises in the, you know, it's very likely that the next word is east, and that's going to be true in the data, and that's something that by training the model, this large language model will absorb. So it creates a distribution of what comes next, and it will pick something, and then now you have a next and next and next. So it's literally doing something very local. It's picking the next next item, next item. But it has learned the distribution very well, so it looks like something that could have just occurred. So if I'm understanding you correctly, yes. if I say, ChatGPT, tell me a bedtime story, yes. it spits back out, good night, moon. It didn't, as a whole, think up good night, moon. It's going word by word yes. and predicting through the algorithm that has trained it what the next most likely word in that sequence is. Exactly. Good, and then night, and then moon. And then once you have that, and it's not just using the previous one, it's, it can use the previous several thousand if it wants. So including, for example, what you said, bedtime story, good night, that's enough for it to narrow down in its, in its uh, model what are likely sequences to follow, and that's why it looks really good. 
it's still it's still not uh, uh, obvious why it should generate, for example, grammatically correct sentences. Okay, this is something that I haven't seen a, a, a rigorous explanation for, uh, long range. Right? So, so there's still some mysteries. There's huge mysteries around.